It's my great pleasure to introduce Dulila El Huderi from the European Commission and Sanjana Hadatua from the ICT for Peace Foundation, who will offer their perspective on this year's conference theme, Mainstreaming Crisis Mapping. Both the ICT for Peace Foundation and the Joint Research Center have been instrumental in co-organizing and hosting this year's event. We thank them very much for their support, and we'd like to now turn to them to help us frame important issues going into this year's conference. So, Dalila? Thank you, Jen. Well, good afternoon, my dear colleagues. It is also my pleasure to welcome you to the third International Conference of Crisis Mappers. As Patrick Meyer and Nian Jen Zemke have mentioned, this is the first time this conference is held in Europe, and whose location was not chosen by chance, but rather for several strategic reasons, three of which I'd like to highlight to you today. Firstly, the European Union is the largest donor of humanitarian and development assistance globally. Secondly, the ICT sector in the EU account for some 8% of its GDP. Furthermore, the EU also has a seven-year research program at the European level with a budget of around 12 billion euros earmarked for R&D in ICT, security and space to address challenges in homeland security, civil protection and global security challenges, including humanitarian disasters amongst other issues. About 9 billion euros of that is earmarked for ICT research alone. And last but not least, Geneva is the host of a large number of UN agencies and other intergovernmental organizations, NGOs, and businesses engaged in humanitarian operations and whose operational needs can help to guide academia, research organizations, and the crisis mapping community to develop and deliver relevant and reliable products and services. As Patrick and Jen has, have already mentioned, this year's conference has been organized with the ICT for Peace Foundation, the Crisis Mappers, the Swiss Confederation, who I'd like to thank profusely for the effort and hospitality. Moreover, it has been a pleasure for our team to work closely with Daniel Staufascher, who unfortunately is not able to be with us today, but hopefully he can join us tomorrow, Sanjana Hatatua, and especially also Barbara Weeks, who we've been working with closely since the beginning of this year. Our special thanks are extended to Patrick Meyer and Jen Zimke for helping us to transform the North American crisis mapper experience into a European one. And we've both through the GRC and ICTP for Peace Foundation have been working very closely since the beginning of this year, actually, to help to realize this conference here in Europe. Equally important, I also wish to extend our special thanks to the World Bank, ESRI, and also the John Carroll University have also helped with uh, sponsoring the conference. Now, the goal of the third International Conference for Crisis Mappers is, as Patrick uh, mentioned briefly, but I would like to emphasize again, is to bring together practitioners, researchers, developers of ICT solutions, and equally important policymakers to discuss and assess the role of novel ICT solutions in the fields of emergency and humanitarian aid interventions, as well as the challenges of mainstreaming ICT services and products in the operational practice of emergency response and humanitarian aid communities. Now, in the last decade, the use of ICT solutions has been steadily growing in the humanitarian and civil protection communities for a number of reasons. Better and cheaper computers and mobile devices, cheaper and more accessible storage capability, including cloud computing now, better spatial and temporal resolution satellite data, and equally important, better awareness and increasing confidence by the user communities in emergency response and humanitarian relief in the reliability and quality of ICT-derived services and products. So in summary, today we are seeing the growing use of ICT solutions to support humanitarian and emergency response interventions in the field, the accepted use of remote sensing derived products to support emergency and humanitarian interventions, and the increasing use of web-based platforms to support information sharing and collaborative initiatives. But more recently, and particularly since Haiti 2010, we are also seeing new interesting initiatives such as voluntary crowdsourcing and social media. They have entered the arena. Now, the opportunities provided through continuously evolving ICT solutions and new sources of information such as social media and voluntary crowdsourcing 
come along with new challenges we must address if we wish to mainstream them in the operational workflow of emergency response and humanitarian relief. They include massive information overload from all sorts of information sources, traditional and non-traditional, massive ICT overload, new actors engaged in information generation. In addition, the new initiatives brought about by social media and crowdsourcing also raise the important challenge of information trust, reliability, and sustainability. The use of ICT solutions in the field, for example, through the combined use of web-based platforms and mobile devices, implies that we are able to quickly and in near real time transmit geolocated photos, videos, data communication, text reports, and so on from the field to situation centers, to voluntary initiatives, and to also share with and between actors in the field. How do we build trust, reliability, and sustainability in developments related to practitioner and voluntary information generation initiatives? Remote sensing derived products and traditionally produced geoinformation layers are routinely used today in support to emergency and humanitarian preparation, preparedness, and response. Usable, reliable, and trusted products are key characteristics of products provided today by traditional service or information providers. Again, how do we build trust, reliability, and sustainability in novel developments related to the new voluntary information generation type initiatives, building around remote sensing and other in geoinformation data that we have since seen evolve since uh, Haiti last year. Timeliness of relevant and trusted information is essential in the emergency and response phase of any crisis. Today, in the civilian domain, for a number of reasons, there are limited improvements we can expect from satellite-derived information in terms of providing a situational awareness at time intervals far more frequent than 24 hours a day, uh, a day on a daily basis on the same uh, crisis uh, hotspot. Therefore, there is an expected interest by actors engaged in the emergency and humanitarian relief communities in understanding the limitations and added value of the use of field-based practitioner sensing and voluntary community sensing or crisis mapping to address information gaps. In a number of recent disasters, the mainstream media appear to have taken up crisis mapping solutions as an integral part of the reporting. This is not yet necessarily the case in emergency and humanitarian relief communities. Why? The traditional emergency and humanitarian relief processes were designed around sharing information between known and trusted teams and their partners. They were not designed to easily integrate information from new sources, such as social media or voluntary due information production initiatives. They also cannot always adapt quickly their workflows to accommodate new ICT solutions new voluntary crisis mapping teams, or to quickly, quickly integrate local volunteered uh, information. This means there is still a lot of work ahead of us to build more trust in new ICT uses and to systemize and mainstream this in the operational workflow of emergency and humanitarian relief communities. And this also applies to new crowdsourced voluntary generated uh, geo and other information. Furthermore, we should keep in mind that natural disasters, conflicts, and other types of disasters are not reducing. The total number of disaster events is trending up. The first half of 2011 has already produced more events than most years before 2006. This increasing trend will, of course, add a strain on practitioners engaged in emergency response and uh, preparedness and response who, we have to remember, have to save lives and improve the well-being of survivors, particularly those who have a mandate to act in disasters and crises inside and outside the Union or widely outside the European Union. They need trusted, reliable, and sustainable information and tools they can easily integrate in their operational workflow. Therefore, we have two enormous challenges ahead of us. Building and, and maintaining trust, reliability, and sustainability as a regular feature in traditional information products and ICT services, a better understanding of the challenges, the needs of the design for trust, reliability, and sustainability of new sources of information originating from community sensing or crowdsource mapping or other, and how best to use them in complement to traditional information products and ICT services. What we wish to avoid, particularly for the practitioner, is to have more information at the expense of having less relevant, less reliable, and less trustworthy information. Trust, reliability, and sustainability will remain the largest challenge. 
We must remember that one of the key success measures in emergency and humanitarian relief response is whether the ICT services and information products or the novel volunteered crowdsourced type information can or has helped to save more lives, to further improve the well-being of affected communities, and to further increase our society's resilience to future disasters. Only then should and can these technological solutions be integrated by the Union and other international response actors in their operational workflow. Over the years, the European Commission's Office for Humanitarian Aid and Civil Protection, better known as DG ECHO to many of you, has continuously addressed these challenges with the scientific and technical support of the European Commission's Joint Research Centre. Today, DG ECHO's Crisis Monitoring Information Centre is equipped with continuously improved ICT-based solutions for early warning, alerting, crisis mapping, and information, as well as training support, helping it to build an enhanced EU disaster preparedness and response capability. However, there is always room for improvements in the field of monitoring and situational awareness. And the interesting new challenges that lie ahead of us concerning field-based practitioner sensing or voluntary information generation uh, or crisis mapping raise the question of what added value can they provide in complement to the current usage of ICT services and products, and what should we do to render them trusted, reliable, and sustainability? The underpinning theme, as Patrick mentioned, of this year's conference, uh, conference mainstreaming depicts the challenges of trust, reliability, and sustainability of information and services. I hope, I do hope, that over the next two days, we can bring to a fore the discussion on the added value and challenges of mainstreaming novel ICT solutions and especially voluntary crisis information generation in the operational workflow of emergency responders and humanitarian uh, relief actors so that we can come up at the end of the workshop with a number of recommendations for practitioners, policymakers, industry and the research community. Once again, a warm welcome on my part on the behalf of the Joint Research Centre, and I look forward to a productive today's workshop uh, with you all. And at this stage, I'd like to hand over the, the code keynote, if you like, with uh, my colleague Sanjana. Uh, thank you very much.